<laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I hope that works. What are you What are you compelling with? Fear. So is that iron? I don't know, but I get a plus one for it. Uh, if you're threatening or inciting, it is an iron. If you're lying or swindling, it's shadow. I mean, I'm... You're not actually going to curse him, so you are ah. technically lying. Okay. So, plus three? Uh, whatever your liar swindle is. Well, I got shadow and two and then intimidation. Sure. It's a strong hit. <laughs> so he just he cracks like you're you're he's like he's like I'm not I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna tell you and I'm back in the background like you just gotta tell him man you just you just need to tell him you, he, she's gonna curse you <laughs> and he's like all right all right all right I'll talk I'll talk God save me she just reaches up and pats him on the face with his own blood and then what and then. Just kind of like shoves the chickens back in her pack, looks at Fatir and says, "You ask." He, he, I watch. <laughs> he, he like steps for like steps forward and like not at all like comfortable with this situation. <laughs> well, all right then, talk. W- w- what do you want to know? How many of you are in the cave? I don't know. We come and we go as we need. Could Pun- I punch him in the face. How many of you are in the cave? He kind of spits up a tooth and coughs a little. And then laughs and he says, For all I know, there could be up to a hundred of us. That's a lot of people. Yeah, he's like, not. He's, not, a, he's obviously not like being Like 20 truthful. people in our whole village. He's not being truthful. Obviously. But does Fatir fall for it? Well, no. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I am going to make a gather information, though, and I get a plus one on it from your compel. Okay. So. And um, I'm gathering information, which is plus wits. Yeah, just to keep up the appearance, um, Outcast run, like, goes over to one of the guys that we killed. And she's just gonna like cut a vein and start draining it into that wine skin and just keep eyes with this guy you're interrogating. <laughs> okay. So, Wits and I get plus one for gathering information after your strong hit on Compel. Um, you also, like, do you get something for that? Uh, if you use the exchange to gather information, make that move now. You also get plus one momentum on a successful Compel like that. Okay, here is my attempt to. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got a strong hit on my gather information. Um, that's going to get us uh, some nice bennies. Um, on a strong hit, I discover something helpful and specific. Uh, the path you must follow or action you must take to make progress is made clear. Envision what you discover and take plus two momentum. So I feel like, you know, I'm just kind of drilling this dude. Um, you know, how many of you are there? What are you doing here? Um, and I don't really know what specific information I'm asked after, so I'm going to ask the Oracle. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll D100 twice. A hundred and eighty-one. All right. I'm just using Oracle tables one and two, action and theme. Summon fellowship. Okay, so they're a vanguard. There's more coming. From, and obviously they're Likely moving. they heard that battle cry that... Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe not even right now, but maybe their ultimate goal is just to hold the pass long mm. enough for more people to get here. Uh, like a bigger raiding party. Which means if which means if they're a vanguard like this, there's not many of them. They're just scouting. Right. So, what? Maybe ten? And we've got, like, a good half of them here. Say fifteen. Just to keep around ten in the cave. Yeah. So, you know... I, and so I, you know, I keep pushing me like you know who's your who's your leader you know um, I don't know how far we can push him without before he clams up on us but I don't know that was pretty creepy what I did it was pretty creepy yeah. um, so he, I mean I can imagine he gives us a name but the name doesn't really do us any good because um, we don't recognize him. because we don't recognize him so I'm just gonna roll on the Iron Minder names table which is. 
table 13. Got a 77. Zura. The name is Zura. And um, would you give me one more D100 roll? Her, her NPC um, descriptor is insightful. You know, the name Zura doesn't sound very, you know, Anglo-Saxon Norse. What if she's one of your people? I mean, Zura, that has kind of a voodoo-ish kind of sound to it. More so than your average iron minder. Yeah. Is it someone you know? High or low? You just 50 50 in it? Mm -hmm. High is someone you know. No. Nope. Okay. So, not a, not a name you know, but you you might recognize it as something of your. It sounds familiar. Of your culture. It's okay. something that. It's probably a common name. Definitely yeah. possible. Okay, I'm gonna roll one more check because I want to know what she's doing here, or you can roll it for me. I'll do it. Uh, D100. Fifty-eight. Spread faith. Oh my God, she's spreading the faith. This is why Baron Somdi showed up. <laughs> oh, that actually makes sense. So, in a future session, um, an enemy. Loa, another spirit from uh, from the outcast religion, shows up in the village to make trouble, and this is probably the beginnings of that. Uh, that's an awesome role that actually that ties together our stories really nicely. Outcast actually turns to worshiping him because of a bargain. Because of reasons. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. If he ever publishes it, we'll see. I feel like you have to now. Right. Yeah, so, so he says the name, and uh, you recognize it's someone from your culture. Um, obviously, we don't know what the goal is yet, but um, in, in the, we can use that to kind of color our results as we move forward. Um, so how does spreading the faith connect to missing merchants and starving out our village? Now, I'm not saying we got to do this, but voodoo people make zombies and that is a rather like weird way of quote spreading the faith i like it and very you know, zombie is, is all about being dead dead yeah oh man she's turning the merchants into zombies ah! oh i can't even i mean we already got zombies you want zombies this is perfect place for zombies they're called the firstborn Right, but those are different lost. zombies. Why is, Why are there zombies everywhere? Why am I surrounded by zombies? I don't get it. Technically, hmm. he is death, tombs, gravestones, cemeteries, dead relatives, obscenities, yelling, smoking, drinking, disruption. Lots of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I'm wondering if zombies might be pushing it. I don't know. I mean, it would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and that even makes more sense. She's not summoning fellowship. It's not in. She's not waiting for more soldiers. She's, she's literally summoning fellowship. She's summoning zombies. Dirty. So I imagine he tells us all this, like at, at sword point, and the ritual obviously is really close to completion. Like it's like, oh no, like that's why they're so fucking this. afraid of me, huh? They think I'm like her. They think you're like her. Why are you not? Creepy bitch. I mean, for all you know, what I was doing was doing a child's nursery rhyme. That chant was a nursery rhyme. Well, I don't know that. No, nobody does. I'm terrified. But that's what it was supposed to be. She was doing a nursery rhyme to intimidate them because she couldn't think of anything else on top, off the top of her head. Still awesome. So I, f I feel like that's... Um, in. This may be a bit of an easy, a gimme on the milestone, but we've uncovered the plot. We know what's going on and what we have to do from here. I think that's probably worth our second milestone. 
Yeah. Um, if we weren't playing a very quick one shot, I would be more selective. But I would like to make it all the way through to a fulfillment before the end of this of the session. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to award myself a milestone here. Good job, Justin. Thanks. I'll get yours as well since I'm doing mine. Huh, thank you. So, uh, you know, Fatir's like zombies. Those aren't real. Like, the walking dead. Okay, just gives him a questioning look. I mean, everyone knows the tales of the Draugr and, you know, the, 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 the Crypt Walkers and things like that, but those don't really happen. Those are nursery rhymes for children. Not in Michael. Well, either way, we need to go get rid of these bandits. You ready to go in? Ready as ever. Um, I think before before I go in, though, I am going to take some time to see if I can bandage the wound that they stuck me with during the uh, the fight. Um, because I'm mending myself, I roll plus iron or plus wits, whichever is lower. In this case, plus wits. So I have two. Wow. So, I've got a pair of eights here. God damn it. I think it's time for the, for the, for the twist table. You think it's time for the twist table? Yeah. Let's pull out the twist table. So, what I'm doing now is we're rolling on table number 18, major plot twist. We're about halfway through the quest here, and I've rolled a, a pair. So, so, to me, this is the perfect time to throw out a, uh, a major twist. Do you want to roll that 100, or should I? Okay. I like rolling dice. Oops, if I click on the right thing. I need one. There's one. Seventy. The enemy gains new allies. Well, could they be new allies of old allies? Are you saying like the dead people like get up and start fighting us again? That's so <laughs> so yeah, so like I, I pull out, my, I'm pulling out my supplies, I'm pulling out my bandages, and um, like right as I'm going to wrap them around myself, because obviously I failed to heal, uh, I, I I look up and like there's like the zombies like coming through like th through the bush like holding his sword, and he's about to give it to you just like square in the back. So I have to like drop what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to say that because I just dropped my bandages, like I stop, I do still have to pay the price on my missed uh, heal move. I'm going to deal myself minus two supply, which actually deals you minus two supply as well, because we share a supply track. So yeah, I just drop it, and they're going to be dirty and useless after this. So I drop my chickens. <laughs> and I, I immediately I jump up, chickens. and I'm like, you know, behind you! Uh, and, like, get rid of the charge in to try and protect you from the... Uh, So how do we want to resolve this? Do we want to have me, you know, enter the fray against the zombie first, and then, um, you know, you try to face danger depending on how that goes, or do you want to try to avoid the blow first and see how that goes? Uh, I will try to avoid the blow first. Okay, great. So you're uh, probably facing danger here. Um, how are you avoiding it? I'm just going to try and roll out of the way. Edge, then. Strong success. Strong hit. Great. So you get a plus one momentum, and you're successful in avoiding the blow. And I feel like that uh, that gives me like ju just that moment, like you roll out of the way, and then I just bull rush the uh, the uh, the guy. And um, so I'm I'm entering the fray. I feel like they were dangerous before, and now that they're zombies, they're formidable. Yeah. And because we're just gonna keep cutting him, and he's just not gonna die. Like. Um, so I am going to enter the fray with these zombies again. I'm going to make them up their thing. If these guys are formidable. Then I'll stick some text in there for you. Uh -huh. All 
right, so we start a new progress track here for zombies. And so I go ahead and enter the fray. In this case, we both know each other's here, so I'm going to be entering the fray, facing off against my foe with just plus hard. Uh, plus hard is not my strong suit, so there's a good chance this doesn't go well for me. I might have to rearrange his stats and move the, um, the plus two out of either edge or wits into heart, because it doesn't make sense the way that I play him. Anyway, not good yet. So I have one for heart. Um, yeah, so I completely miss. Um, in order to not miss, I am going to burn my mo momentum. So when I burn momentum, I can cancel any challenge dice that are lower than my momentum value. Right now I'm at plus seven, I drop down to plus two. So I treat it as though I had rolled a seven on my challenge, on my action dice, which gets rid of this six. Meaning I go from missing entirely to getting a weak hit. In this case, I get to choose whether I want momentum or if I want initiative. And I'm actually gonna take the momentum in this case. So I'm gonna gain plus two momentum. And then you know our battle's joined, but he ends up like in control. So I imagine like I bull rush him and I just hit him whole, like full on my shield and it's like hitting a brick wall. Like he's just animated with this dark magic and he just takes it. You know, I, he, I feel bones crunching with the force of impact and then he just immediately grabs a hold of my shield and just tries to yank it out of my hand. Uh, so I imagine I'm facing danger with iron just trying to hold on to my weapon, you know? And I've got a weak hit. I'm able to do it, but I'm, like, I'm scared. I'm afraid of this thing, because this is absurd. i fought bears. I've fought, you know, big dudes in my life. You know, I'm, I'm a fighter. And this guy, I mean, like, I just delivered a blow that would shatter, like, stone, and he just eats it. So I'm, I'm going to suffer minus spirit in this case, minus one. Um, because that's the the weak hit on a uh, face damage is that I take a complication or take a little bit of, you know, of damage to one of my tracks. Um, so yeah, I'm shaking. This is, this is scary. Um, and so I'm able to hold on to my shield, but it's because my, my hand is like in like a rictus because I'm, I'm like stunned. You're terrified. I am terrified. Uh, so I do need to make the, um, what is the spirit move? Um, test your spirit. When you face mental stress or your resolve is tested, I roll plus harder plus spirit, which in this case is plus spirit. Because whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. And I succeed. I have a strong hit here, so I can choose to embrace the darkness for momentum, or I can actually regain that spirit that I just lost. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to embrace the darkness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn into it. I'm gonna use my fear to my advantage. So I take, I have the initiative here. Um, Lisa, you're not really in the fray yet. You know, you're kind of just rolled out of the way. Um, I imagine it's, I almost feel like as soon as we get involved here, like the, um, if we have like a weak hit or a miss, these two guards are gonna like take off. Yeah. So, what are you, what are you doing? I'm gonna jump up and grab my dagger out of the guy's shoulder before he bolts. For one thing. Okay. And then I'm going to, since I still have my axe in my hand, I'm going to flip that over and chuck it at the zombies. Okay, so you're, the zombie. you're entering the fray, and it would be plus heart, because he knows you're there. Fail. <laughs> That's a fail. Um, you don't even have enough momentum to burn on this. Okay, so you just got to take the consequences. Um... So on a miss, combat begins with you at a disadvantage. Pay the price, and your foe has initiative. I um, lost my my axe. Okay, so you definitely throw you throw your axe in the woods. That's down. Uh, we definitely said that these guys are going to try and get away at the first opportunity. What if one of them doesn't try and get away? And the reason you're at disadvantage is because he's about to stick his bite sword in your back, or like his axe. He trips me. He trips you and knocks you to the ground. Oh, that's rough. So you know, I'm sitting here, I'm fighting this thing. I managed to like recover my feet, my my spirit. And I feel like like my fear is kicked into galvanization because I see you get knocked to the ground, and this guy likes getting ready to give you the dagger or the axe in the face or whatever. And so um, I think actually we need a separate track for him because he is a dangerous bandit, not a zombie. So here's what we can do about that. 
You just want to clear the one off here. Yeah, if you can just remove the... There we go. Boop. And there you go. Perfect. And I'm going to just grab all those. And boop. There you go. Change bandits to bandit. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. There you go. Okay, so he's back on. Two separate tracks here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to turn away from the zombie because I can't, I can't let this guy murder you. And I'm going to step in. I have the initiative, and I'm going to strike at this guy with the um, with the edge of my shield, and then just follow it up with the sword. Uh, strong hit. Yes, yeah, so that's a strong hit. So I'm able to retain the initiative here. So I come through. I smash him with the shield, and then I get I give him the sword right behind it. Um, I'm actually I'm, I'm just gonna go straight for end the fight here on him if I can, because um, I'm gonna use my blade bound, my fury, because all my fear just turns into into fury, and with my blade bound asset I can choose to inflict two extra harm, but suffer minus one spirit to do it because it's you know taxing on me. So I'm gonna um. suffer my spirit. It's two harm, two progress per harm, and I've dealt four harm. So we should have eight of ten on the progress. So Plus yeah. That Huh? That two? Or is that including the two? That's perfect. Alright. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go for end the fight, because I'm pretty sure it. I just killed him. Hopefully. So in this case, we just roll two d10s and compare it to the progress track. How did you miss that? <laughs> and he becomes formidable, doesn't he? I wish you guys could see his face right now. Oh my god. That is incredibly <laughs> unlikely. Um, and the the outcome of that is that on a miss, you lose. Like, you have lost this fight in a million years. I would never have predicted that happening. Um, yeah, I... So I smash him with the shield, he falls back, I ram the sword through him, and then he pulls back and takes my sword and like lurches away, like off toward the cave. Right as this other zombie comes like charging in, because obviously I've missed. So my blade bound asset is kaput until I get my sword back. Is that is that suitably grim? That that should be suitably grim. Okay. So um so yeah, I've at least driven him off of you. And this zombie is like right on my back now, from where I've tried, where I've saved you. So what, what do you do? This thing's about to bite me, or stab me, or something. Since I'm not in danger, I guess, um, I'm gonna get up and actually use my bow. Okay. Um, so you missed your enter the fray, that's where, where you started. So the, the, this thing actually kinda has initiative on you right now, right? So you're gonna be clashing, which means if you miss, he's gonna hurt you. Use plus edge. Uh, it would be plus edge, yeah. That's a miss. What are the chances of that? That's 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 low, man. So yeah, that's another miss. Uh, it means you still don't have initiative, and you're gonna pay the price. Uh, he's capable of dealing up to three. He's capable of dealing three harm because he's formidable. Go for it. Um, what kind of zombie is he? He's not like an ice ice zombie like the first. No, you he is a voodoo zombie. He has full control of his mind. So it's kind a, of muddled. He's a smart zombie. He can. He basically has his orders, mm -hmm. and he's going to follow his orders. He was given his orders before death. Protect the cave. Keep intruders out. Kill on sight. So I imagine he's just straight up for killing. Okay, in that case it's three harm. Actually, can I burn my momentum? Um, yeah, you could have turned you into a strong hit. That'd I just realized I could do that. So your momentum resets to two. And yeah, that converts to a strong hit. So your clash goes from being a miss. So at the last second, you get the arrow off and you just... You know, right through the eye. <laughs> right through the eye. So that's uh, two progress. Uh, three, actually, because you do an additional... You either get plus one momentum or you can inflict additional harm. It's your choice. 
I will inflict additional harm. So three harm is three progress on a formidable foe. Or one progress per harm. Uh, so you're able to hit him, and you have the initiative here if you want to follow up. Because um, I imagine he's like re- he staggers just a little just from the force of yeah, the arrow. Yeah, I'm going to try chase. and loose off another arrow. Okay, so you're transitioning to strike here. Yeah. Okay. Soft hit. It's or a weak hit. hit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you're going to lose the initiative again here. Um, but your strike does allow for you to um, to inflict your harm. So you move two more progress on him. And this is where he kind of lurches toward us. We have like, we, we, I'm like getting back up and I'm putting my shield back in front of me. And uh, I, you know, I step in front of you as, as the arrow le- looses. And he just grabs a hold and he's like trying to like get his sword over the top of my, of my shield. Um... And I'm I'm gonna try and clash with him. I don't. I, I guess I'm, I pull like a like a scram sax or a dirk or you know some kind of short stabbing weapon because I've got to have a backup because my my sword is making its way into our cave. Um, and so I'm I'm just I'm using my shield to kind of hold him at bay, and I'm just trying I'm trying to like stab because I don't know if anybody killed this thing. Like I I I hit it with a blow that would kill anybody I've ever met, and he's just like yeah you know whatever, no big deal. So here comes the clash. Um, I get plus one momentum on a hit because I'm still a shield bearer, even if I'm no longer blade bound. This is iron. Okay. Ouch. It's a weak hit. Oh yeah, it is. It's a weak hit, I'll take it. <laughs> so I gain plus one momentum on the hit. Move to plus six. Um, I thought that was nine, nine, six. The downside is that... Um, it's, I inflict my harm, but then I have to pay the price. So I, I get a good shot in. Uh, it's two harm, which puts us up to seven progress. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And uh, how how do we pay the price here? But how does this how does this go wrong? I mean, well, he could obviously just do that guy went into the got into the cave. Oh yeah, no, he's gone. That that was the penalty. It's already happened. I so we can that. hear people shouting inside the cave, ready to come out. Okay, yeah, I mean, that would definitely... That would be a pay the price. It could be. Um, it doesn't actually hurt me at all, so I'm okay with it. Oh, no, I've got something worse. Like, he rears back with his, his sword, and he's just getting ready to give me the business with it, and and my and Fenris, like, jumps on him. And, like, just, he, and, like, he starts, like, tearing at the, at the zombie, and the, uh, and the zombie, like, gut, just guts him. And my, my companion suffers three harm. Rip Fenris. That explain why you had Fenrir in your other campaign. Different dog. Um, can't move that token for some reason. Uh, 